Hi, everybody, and welcome to Thursday night's Team Fit Revolution training call. We're really excited that you guys are here tonight. We have a really special training for you from two very special people that are near and dear to mine and Blake's heart. Um, I apologize up front for a little background noise, but um, our son Dylan is coaching the CUNA High freshman football team, so Blake and I are here supporting our son. <laughs> so with that, we will go right into our training. Um, but first, I just wanted to say a little something special about Ray and Steph Pian too. Uh, Ray is a personally sponsored coach of mine, and we met, gosh, I think back in 2008, and he uh, was a customer of mine. Make note of that. He was one of my free customers, <laughs> and I sent out an email to all my customers in the surrounding Dallas, Texas area that I was going to be there um, host, being part of a hosting event to talk about Team Beachbody. And Ray was one of a few people that responded, and that's when I met Ray. He came on board, and he has been kind of rocket fuel ever since. And what we really love and appreciate about Ray and his wife, Steph, is that they're always learning. They're always educating themselves, immersing themselves in um, uh, you know, books to expand their mind and help them grow their business. They have a strong faith. Um, and just recently, they made a big move from Texas to San Diego, California. He'll share probably a little bit about that. Probably a little scary, but also exciting. Uh, and he's also taken the last year to become a certified instructor, and I might be saying it wrong, with Norman Vincent Peale's Think and Grow Rich program. And he'll talk a little bit more about that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm running around here. Um, anyway, with that, I want to thank you, Ray and Steph, for taking the time to be part of this call. You guys bring so much to the team. And uh, we loved meeting your team at Summit. We can tell you're passionate and your team loves you, and as your team grows, you're just going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal legacy with Team Beachbody. So thank you, and I'm going to turn it over to you and Steph. Well, hey, guys. Um, first off, thanks, Angie, uh, for that, that warm and, and hearty introduction. Um, it, it really does mean a lot when uh, we, we are part of uh, you guys' conversation, and you guys have done so much for us and, and for... Um, our belief in Team Beachbody and, and our belief in uh, the, the mission uh, behind the company and, and really this amazing opportunity that we have in front of us. Um, and thanks for uh, allowing us this opportunity and to talk about something that is near and dear to our heart as well uh, with the rest of the Team Fit Revolution um, team. So uh, I, I have Malign Steph with me. You know, we're, we're both going to be sharing a bit about our story and what's really allowed us to face the adversities in, in this business. And hopefully uh, by the end of this call, you know, those who are listening, you'll be able to uh, have that secret power um, that's going to allow you to jump over the hurdles that you're going to possibly face or maybe you're facing right now. And um, hopefully by the end of this, uh, you'll also have a very cool tool that you can use um, to really get things moving. So like Angie said, uh, I am a customer lead. Uh, my story, our story actually begins with a quick trip to Dallas from Austin. Uh, at the time, I was broke for the second time in my life. Um, I was actually living, sharing an apartment with my sister in, in Austin, Texas, and uh, out of nowhere, I, I received an email from from Beachbody. Uh, now, I was I was very familiar with Beachbody because I had completed a round of P90X, and uh, uh, I I loved my results. You know, I, I think everybody loved my results, and including Steph, you know, who at the time was just a a girlfriend of mine, and uh, I I. Took the time. I, I took the time to drive up four hours up to Dallas with really no expectations at all whatsoever. Uh, I believe Shakeology had just come out, and Angie was uh, smart enough to include that in her email that they were giving away free samples of Shakeology, and, and that was just the bait that I needed. But anyhow, um, I showed up at this opportunity meeting. 
and before I left, I had signed up. Like no one had to pitch me anything. No one had to show me the comp plan. Heck, I didn't even know what I was getting into, but things just felt right. And uh, I'm glad that I made that decision, and and I'm glad that I drew uh, you know upon my my faith you know to make it all happen. We actually really started growing our business in San Antonio. Now, I know I said that I lived in Austin, uh, but what was going on in my life at that time is, is I was losing some houses to foreclosure, and uh, I, I decided to move back to San Antonio to uh, do all that I could to um, keep them in my possession. Um, and so we started growing our business in, in San Antonio. Uh, shortly after I signed on, signed on as a coach, and Steph and I, uh, we we did um, become an official couple, and, and she moved in, and uh, she was one of the first coaches that I signed to get me to Emerald. And I'm actually going to chime in. Hi, guys. Good good evening. Um, and so my name is Steph, and, and so let me, I wanted to interrupt to just kind of paint the picture of where we were at that time. And... Uh, and <laughs> So I'm laughing because I'm remembering what uh, my mom's response to it all. It it all was, and, and all being our relationship. And like Ray mentioned, he was broke. <laughs> he was broke. He was down to his last what three hundred dollars in his bank account. I really didn't know how bad it was, um, but he kept. You know, he came back from this this meeting from Beachbody, and he was just. So he caught the vision and I saw it in his eyes. I heard it in his voice and something about it just made me say, you know, this something is something great is here and he might be broke and, and, but you know, whatever I, I saw, I, his vision was just so powerful in it and belief that I said, Let, let's, okay, well, I'll give this guy a chance. Right. Quote unquote. And my mom kept asking Stephanie, what did he do? And I'm like, you know, Mom, I don't really know what he does. <laughs> and I'd ask him, so what do you do for work? And he kind of went around the bush on the response. And he didn't really have a response. That was a thing. And, and But he had a dream. Um, and how do you explain that to, you know, your mom? And she's like, Stephanie, I had just graduated from college and starting my first job as a teacher. And she's like, she was so concerned that, all he wanted was pretty much a sugar mama. You know, there's no co co no um, sugar coating it. it. She was genuinely concerned about how this guy was going to um, su help support us. Where's that connecting? Okay. Sorry, guys, we got a, a lost connection on the um, on the meeting, but I'm sure you guys I think you could hear us on the phone. Sure, we'll, we'll continue and and uh, just make that assumption. Yep, we so got anyhow, you. Anyhow, okay, okay, great, perfect. thanks. Um, so anyhow, uh, you know, we we were we were there in San Antonio. We really didn't know what we were doing, but it just felt right, you know. And, and that's that's kind of hard to explain, but that that's really all we can can say about it. Um, you know, I, I did catch on to this vision, and, and I did have a, a, a vision for us as, as a couple. And it, it's so funny because our first few years in, in the business, you know, and, and th we're going on, like, on to our six years. You know, in, in November, it'll, it'll actually be six years. And uh, our first few years, uh, I, I really couldn't explain what I was doing to Steph. And it was hard for me to paint that picture to her. And the funny thing is, is that when I, when I finally, when we finally had enough money to get both of us out to Summit, she was able to catch the vision as well. And when, when that happened, I mean, things really started getting, becoming more fun. And so Steph mentions vision, and we're going to talk about it, you know, quite a bit, you know, throughout our presentation. Uh, but the vision was only one part of it. It was our faith and our willingness to apply our faith that allow us to, allowed us to get through all the barriers that we had and over all the hurdles that came into our life. And, 
and uh, actually do what we set our eyes on doing, and, and that was moving out to San Diego and living by the beach. Uh, now, I know, I know that doesn't appeal to everybody. Um, you know, I get it. Uh, but for me, that was big. Like for me, that was that was the vision. It was uh, it was to be, be able to live on the beach, to be able to run every day on the beach. You know, to go and grab a surfboard in the middle of the day uh, as as my daily exercise, um, and and to be proud to take off my shirt. You know, and that meant a lot to me at the time because one, you know, um, I started off. 30, 40 pounds overweight, and it was hard for me to take off my shirt in the shower. Um, and two, I, I had I had been broken down financially, and for me to keep that dream alive, that you know that American dream, um, I said, you know what, I, that's where I want to take it. And, and to me, that was what I pictured the American dream to be: was to you know move out to California and live on the beach. So. Um, through everything that, that we faced, uh, that was that was the goal, and uh, we're we're months away from from making that happen. We're actually out here in San Diego now, not as close to the beach as we want, and not as ripped up as we want, but uh, it's it's right around the horizon this, this next few months. So we're super super excited uh, where we're at, and we're super excited to get to the the next slide and continue with our presentation. So. Uh, before we continue, I, I'd like to, to define faith, okay? And, and it's funny how I define it, but this isn't the first time that I have shared this quote. Uh, to me, faith is knowing there is a monster on the other side of the door waiting to take your life and being okay with it, okay? Being okay with it. Faith is really the fuel to life. Like, faith is is what allows you to chase your your destiny, to chase your purpose. And it's super, super powerful. A real quick story, guys. Um, for, for those who have been following me, you know about uh, how I sold my 1973 Camaro, you know, early on, um, or a chance you know, at, at an entrepreneur life. But anyhow, um, this Camaro that I had, I, I had inherited from my father when I passed away. And... Uh, I knew very little about mechanics, very little about cars when, when I inherited it. Um, but anybody who's ever had an, an older car, you know that they break down, you just got to fix it. If you want to continue to drive, you got to fix it. Uh, so this Camaro of mine, uh, when I first started working with it, um, it, it didn't have any kind of power at all whatsoever, and I couldn't figure it out. Um, I knew that I had a monster. I knew that I had a beast. I knew that I could, you know, go onto the highway and, and, and I should be able to race any car and beat them. But that wasn't the case. Something was holding this car back. And I started taking it apart. I, you know, I, I took out the carburetor, cleaned the carburetor, uh, played with the timing. I did almost everything that I knew how to do and everything that I read or, um, research how to do I did it and uh, one day I, I finally finally decided to drop the tank the gas tank the fuel tank and completely take it out and and I told myself this was the only thing that I have not taken apart and cleaned out so I, I took this gas tank off okay I, I remember I'm in the parking lot and I had a couple of jacks and uh, I had to unscrew some bolts and it just dropped and when I took it apart, I looked inside my tank and I realized that there was an extra fuel filter in there. So um, it totally caught me by surprise, but when I grabbed it, 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 was, it was so clogged and, and, and I was like, there's, there's no way, there's no way that this, this little filter, this little screen could be what's holding back all the power in this car. Um, but... Uh, I decided to go to AutoZone and replace it. And sure enough, when I replaced it and I put my tank back on, that car just took off. So all the time that I had spent taking everything else apart and replacing everything, all the money that I had spent on, on upgrading things, it turned out to be a $3 filter, $3 screen that was holding back all that power. And to me, guys, that's what faith is. That's what faith could do for your life. When you harness faith and you 
and, and you understand this concept of applied faith and, and you put it into practice, the same thing could happen to your life. Everything that you may have tried before, may have, may have uh, worked for other people, but something was missing for you. And this, I feel, may just be it. Next slide. So when I was growing up, I thought that I had a, a firm grasp of what faith was. You know, I thought if, if you just believe, you know, if, if you just believe in yourself or you believed in a higher power, you believed in, in miracles, then that's what faith is. Uh, but when I came across this passage in, in the Bible, it, it really shaped everything up for me. It says, faith without deeds is dead. And it makes me think about a story that I read uh, about a a pastor in um, in the South, and uh, it was he was going through uh, there, there was a drought going on in his area, and everybody was praying for rain. The whole congregation was praying for rain, and it was it was a big deal. So he decided to to have a special sermon, and he invited everybody out so they could pray for rain. And when they showed up. The first thing that he said was, how sad. You guys pray for rain, but you forgot your umbrellas. <laughs> you know, faith is knowing that things are going to work out, knowing that things are going to happen, and taking action because you know that it's all going to work out. Next slide. So what stops us from really having faith and applying? Okay, a lone wolf, and the other one is a, a Komodo dragon with its tail wrapped around a yin yang. And the reason I got that tattoo was because yin yang is a symbol of balance. And and to me, this whole world is balance. You know, for, for all the goodness, there's evil. For all the light, there's darkness. Like the world is balanced. And the opposite of faith, what balances faith out is fear. And if you are going to really apply your faith, then one of the big first steps is to identify your fears and look them head on. The seven big fears, according to these principles that I study uh, from Napoleon Hill, you know, author of Think and Grow Rich, the seven major fears are poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, loss of liberty, and death. Okay, so now you know what, what are more than likely the fears that are, that are holding you back. And, and so, you know, if you think about this and you think about our, our business and, and what keeps us from succeeding, you know, if, if we look at, at poverty, um, how many people do you know uh, don't invest in Shakeology because they're afraid of, of losing the money? They're afraid of not being able to pay their bills. Uh, how many people do you know uh, are, are hesitant to invite that next person to their challenge group or to share one of the newest programs out because they're afraid of criticism and, and what uh, they, they might say? So how many people do you know um, haven't applied themselves in this business uh, because of their fear of the loss of, of liberty, you know, the loss of, of, of having their own thing and, and, and uh, doing their own thing, you know? Um, so fear, guys, it's, it's nothing more than that screen filter uh, that I shared with you on the camera, that typically is the biggest thing that is holding back our faith and ability to use that power. Next slide. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, the ride that Steph and I have shared with Team Beachbody hasn't been smooth. You know, you you get onto these 
national wake-up calls, and they like to highlight a lot of the one-year wonders or, you know, two-year miracles, the people that are uh, finding quick success. Uh, but we're not that. That is definitely not our story. Far from it. <laughs> Far from it. But, you know, what I tell people, guys, is that success is whatever you define it to be. You know, if, if a man or woman, if a person hasn't been active and they haven't worked out in years and they finally make up the mind, their mind to exercise and to lead a healthier lifestyle. And for years, all they did was sit on a couch. And so they get up one day and they tell themselves that I'm going to jog around the block. I'm going to jog around the block without stopping. And so they, they put on their sweatband and they tie up their shoes and they say a quick prayer, turn on their iPod and go run around the block without stopping. Are they a success? And, and I would say yes. You know, if they set a goal to do it and they did it, then they are a success. You know, for, for Steph and, and, and uh, myself, our goal was to enjoy our youth. You know, to to be able to come out to California and and um, you know live live a, an extreme lifestyle, if you will. Um, we we have no real desire of uh, you know owning a new Corvette or you know owning a, a five thousand square foot house yet. You know that that's not in our desires yet. Um, but we had something else in mind and. In order for us to get here, we have had to face a lot of temporary defeats. Now, I, I want to clarify that because some people would say that you failed a lot. But in my mind, you only fail when you give up. And for us, we have just faced a lot of temporary defeats. Um, like that one time that we opened up a gym. You know, we were in San Antonio, and, and we thought that it would be a great idea to open up a gym and it would help us with fit clubs and it would help us reach out to the community and it would give us a venue to have presentations. Uh, so um, I, I drafted up a business plan and I reached out to some of my friends and you know raised, uh, I don't know, it was like $10,000 to get us open. And uh, we ended up shutting the doors in like six months. It totally bombed. It totally bombed. It was it was a horrible idea, <laughs> you know. And uh, we were able to learn something from that. You know, we were able to learn that uh, that wasn't the way to go. You know, not for us. You know, that social media was such a uh, a better platform for us because uh, we wanted we wanted the freedom. We wanted less anchors. We wanted just to be able to pick up and move when we wanted. And you know, having a brick and mortar business didn't allow that. So having a, a, a beach body business does. And, you know, above all, it helped us really tune in to what our vision truly was. And opening that gym just wasn't in alignment with what we envisioned. You know, here we were wanting to just free ourselves up and, and have that freedom to be able to, you know, travel and go to different places. However, what seemed like a great idea um, because, oh, it's in alignment with, you know, Beachbody and we opened up the gym and, but was it truly in alignment with what we envisioned in the future? And, and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so that is absolute key. A lot of things might sound like great ideas. You might tune into that Monday wake up cause like, oh my goodness, I need to do that. That sounds like a great idea. You know, they were successful with it. I'm going to, I'm going to embark on that, you know, same strategy and ask yourself, well, yeah, it might sound like a great idea, but isn't it, is it, in true alignment with my vision and where I would eventually like to be in a year. Heck, even in like three months, six months. Yeah. If we did not know about applied faith, then it would have been easy for us to pull the cards and say, hey, this isn't working. But we knew that, you know, temporary defeat is, is a part of it. You know, temporary defeat is an opportunity for you to apply your faith. You know, do you believe? Do you, do you know that it's all going to work out? I mean, another example is, is um, you know, all the times that we've been broke, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I, I say this jokingly, you know, but in, in all seriousness, guys, 
um, being being broke is is actually a good thing. Um, and when I say when I say broke, uh, what what I what it's meant for us has changed. You know, the first time that that I was broke, I, I had no income coming in. I had uh, savings that I had exhausted, and and I I I, I had no idea what to do. Um, but I learned. You know, I learned something, and um, it allowed me to build back up. And then I went broke again. And the second time I was broke, um, and that's when I met Steph. And Steph, you know, she had a, a stable job. You know, she was a teacher, and you know, so we had an income. Um, but it was just, it was just one of us. You know, it was, it was one person working a job, another person um, going after a dream. And then uh, the third time that, that we've been broke just recently, you know, this is this is different because you know we do have a stream of income, and and we are paying all of our our bills. Um, it just means that uh, we don't have any reserves. You know, everything that we're bringing in, it's going right back out. You know, so um, every time that we've gone through it, we've treated it as a learning experience. Like we don't, we don't hesitate to take it that far and to get close to the edge like that, because we're looking for opportunities to learn. Um, you know, you you don't break through by playing safe. Like you, you have to take it to the edge. You have to explore what it's like. You have to understand what's coming next. You know, it's almost like like when you're when you're playing video games. You know, the other day we were at a, a friend's house and I haven't played video games in years. But when I did, I used to be really addicted to this game called Tomb Raider uh, with Laura Croft. And this was like in PlayStation. You know, before all the controllers started having ten buttons and I couldn't handle it, uh, but I'm I'm sitting here and, and I'm playing this game for the first time and and I have to get uh, acclimated with the controller and five seconds later a a, a rolling boulder um, rolls on my head and I'm dead you know and I'm like oh crap well what did I learn you know what did I learn and how do I survive a little bit longer the next time you know that's that's pretty much life. You know, you're you're going to experience temporary defeat over and over and over again. Uh, but what are you learning from it, and and are you applying what you learn to get you closer to the life that you envisioned? Next slide. So we pretty much talked about two big things. We talked about applied faith, and we've talked about vision. And those two things, guys, they go hand in hand. You know, if through this presentation you ask, you're, you're asking yourself, you know, how do, I, how do I grow my faith? Well, the first thing that I want to tell you is that faith is like a muscle. If you do not use it, you will lose it. But if you train it and you look for opportunities to, to utilize it, then it will grow, and it will grow very, very strong. The other thing that I really want to share with you guys is that faith and the power that you can harness with faith is only possible if you have a vision, if you have somewhere that you want to go in life. And creating a vision is tricky. You know, I know a lot of you guys are familiar with, with dream boards and visualizations. Uh, but creating a vision is more than that. Uh, the tool that I had mentioned earlier is, is something that I have put together that I want to open up to all of you guys. And, and uh, you can see the link on this slide. If, if you can't see the slide, it is uh, raycantu.com slash vision. So raycantu.com slash vision. It is 100% uh, free. This is just a, a, a series of five exercises that I use uh, throughout my life uh, from some of the most powerful books that I've ever read, uh, some from Anthony Robbins, uh, I might have even taken some from an Oprah website, um, but these are five of the most powerful exercises that, that I've come across to really create a vision for your life. And when you take that first step to really shore up your vision, then your daily visualization exercises can really take Power. 
and it really allows you to tune into what you truly want. And, you know, funny story, when we first started dating, just to tell you just how much in, um, it, you know, these, uh, this, these assignments that he's sharing with you just play into his own life is when we started dating, he actually had me do one of these assignments. He had complete, I had no idea what it was. He's like, hey, I want, I want you to do this thing. So he started asking me questions. I take out a sheet of paper, and I remember laughing. I'm like, come on, is this a test? I thought I already graduated. You know, the last thing I wanted to do is take a test. And he's like, come on, come on, just, just play along with me. And it was a visualization, you know, assignment that, that he personally went through. And, and for me, it just, it, it really helped a lot. You know, in that transition phase for me from college to, you know, the real world, so to speak, it just, it brought so much focus and understanding, something that I was not able to get in those four years in college. And it really made me focus on me, my life, my, where I saw my future and where I'd like to, to lead it in alignment with my own, with my personal beliefs. It's crazy what, what a strong vision would do. And, and I knew what I was doing when we were dating. Like, I knew that I could not be with a woman who did not have the capacity to have a vision. And so that was very important for me, and, and, and thank you for taking it. <laughs> but anyhow, guys, um, the, the last part in developing a faith, developing strong faith, is to take action. To take action, and, and that is applied faith. That is the difference between just having faith and applying your faith. When you have a strong vision and, and you're doing your daily visualizations and looking at your dream board, um, then the next step is just to walk through the doors. You know, walk through those doors, especially the scary ones, especially the ones where you have no idea what's on the other side. You know, when someone asks you to do something, a new opportunity arises, more than likely it's because of the effects of applying your faith. When, when you create a vision, what you are really doing is you are, you are asking. You know, um, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. That is the asking portion of it. When you take action, what you are doing is planting the seeds for your harvest. So you can, you can ask for a bountiful harvest, all you want. But unless you are waking up and planting the seeds and watering them and making sure they have sunlight, unless you're doing that, I wouldn't expect much. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I, I really do want to thank uh, Angie and Blake for allowing us to be on this call and uh, also to uh, chat for setting everything up and making sure everything ran smoothly. Um, I encourage you all to take me up on this visualization exercise uh, and on how to create your vision in the next five days. Um, that link again is raycantu.com slash vision. Um, if you have any questions on it, guys, you know, we're just a Facebook message away if you need any kind of clarification or if you'd like the, the next steps on uh, what to do uh, according to uh, Napoleon Hill and uh, Think and Grow Rich uh, philosophies, feel, re feel free to reach out to us as well, guys. Um, we've got a great thing going with Team Fit Revolution, and uh, let's keep pushing it and finish out this quarter strong. Once again, guys, uh, thank you so much, and uh, hope you enjoyed the call. Have a great evening, everyone. All right. Hey, thank you very much, Ray and Steph. That was awesome. Uh, a lot of just an incredibly powerful message there. Uh, we are past our time. So if you have any questions for Ray and Steph, like you said, make sure you post it in Team Fit Revolution or you can reach out to them privately. Uh, I will be uploading this presentation later tonight and I'll put the link that Ray mentioned in there and I'll also put the slides in there. So like he said, th this this is awesome. It's a powerful message, but it only works if you take action and put it to use. So with that, have a good night, everyone, and take care.